You've built one of the most iconic brands in Australia. How important has it been communicating such a strong Australian culture through your brand? I think that's one of the important parts about this business. No one person has created RM Williams. The great man himself had the vision, but the ability for him to engage expertise, to engage people with passion, mm -hmm. and then to be able to grow the business from there. You know, this business today is still about people, whether it's the people that are making the boots um, in our factory in South Australia, whether it's the people in the retail stores or different members of management and staff. Um, you need to have passion and integrity in your people. And that, I think, shines through every business that has that as, as one of its core values. And I suppose the other part is that, you know, it's been very fortuitous that the company has always upheld its Australianness. And, uh, and you've got to do that by making sure you don't forget your heritage. You know, we sell more product today to people in the bush than ever before. Really? We have more people employed in our factory making Australian-made product than ever before. But it's also important to complement that with modern techniques. Mm -hmm. And the emerging markets, as we know in the world today, is to actually look at brands and companies and products that have stood the test of time, but apply themselves to this modern generation. And hopefully, and successfully, I think over the last 13 years, particularly of private ownership under Ken Cowley, um, the company has grown on a consistent basis with double digit growth. Okay. And Obviously, diversification of product lines has been central to that growth because you think clothing, you think boots, you think Iron Williams, but you've actually really expanded the product range. How have you managed that? Yeah, I think it's important that people understand that any business has its foundation. So when we talk about providing workwear to the bush, to the men and women that are still working in Australia today, we've kept that at the forefront. But even as RM himself said, you know, most Australians aspire to be like a bushy. They want to actually have that sense of truly being Australian. We have two great cultures in this nation. One's the beach, one's the bush. Our responsibility is to make sure that we fulfil that. And as he said, you know, it was always a case that there were many people in the cities that wanted to be like the people in the country. So in his normal um, inventive way, he made sure that even the way the product developed then was to make sure that city people felt comfortable about it. In more recent times, um, as we know, with advent of television and radio and marketing, the internet, and particularly now what it means in terms of online business and the world being a closer place, you have to adapt your product to what is required. And uh, you know, I'm very pleased to say, you know, women's wear is one of our strongest parts of our business today. Uh, many, many years ago, it hardly existed. Um, there's people in business today, stockbrokers, they'll wear our boots with their suits. Even past presidents, President Bill Clinton, you know, wore our boots to his second inauguration. Right? Um, it's pretty nice when you can actually get people aspiring to all the things that we stand for as a business, but also that Australians feel that it's their coat of dress mm -hmm. and it's not just moleskins, boots, oilskins, it's actually about dressing like an Australian. And we're a casual country, we're sophisticated, but at the same time, we're actually developing. And I think that's where, particularly with some of our designs now, and the product range, we've met that marketplace. And how do you balance that development, focusing on your core business, what you're good at and known for, and sort of diversifying at the same time? I think that's where you've got to listen to your customers. Uh, one of the great things that we've always done in RM Williams is we've welcomed the feedback. Um, being an iconic Australian company, um, you can be a dartboard. You know, it's very easy in this country, and we tend to have, unfortunately, a habit of seeing success and knocking it down or criticising it. Um, we tend to take the approach that when people are making comments about RM Williams and our products, we listen. What are they actually trying to tell us? What development? How far do they think we can actually take the next product range? So listening to your customers, absolutely critical. You've also got to be honest enough in business to say, that was then. Mm -hmm. What's tomorrow? And again, with somebody like Ken Cowley, who's been owner and chairman um, of this great business, and also RM's best friend, mind you, he always challenged myself and the team to say, what's over the horizon? Look down the road, look to tomorrow. And I think that's where good companies evolve. They not only develop product services and their business for the next two, three, four, five years, listen to their customers, combine those two, and normally you'll actually find success if you do that. Now with such a successful company, obviously there's some temptation to getting more investors on board and even going public. You've gone down the private route. What was the thought process there? Well, if we turn back the clock, um, RM Williams was once a public company. Um, it was under 
Ken's um, guidance and his vision um, to privatise the business. Now, for any one individual to look at taking on an iconic Australian company, um, all credit to he and his family, a great businessman in his own right. But at the same time, he knew that there was such an important part of this business that hadn't really seen the light of day. So in privatising it, that gave us the opportunity to develop the business, to actually put it on the right, trade to success, the right road to success. That was also about opening up more retail businesses. Now, as that developed over the period of time, and thankfully, we were very successful at that, um, there also comes a point where a business should be able to flourish. And I'm often asked, you know, oh, well, what did you do to prepare the business for a sale? Well, it was never about a sale. It was approaches that were made to RM Williams that actually started to get people interested in saying, well, here's a business over the last 10 years, consistency, obviously it's got great ownership, who would be the right partner? And again, between Ken, the board, and the senior management, it was a case of saying, who would be a good fit? Who respects handcrafting? Who actually can see the value in that? Who actually understands the importance of brand and integrity? And I'm very pleased to say, you know, we found all those things um, with El Capital, who were funded by Louis Baton Moe Hennessy in setting up their fund. And that appreciation on a world scale um, is definitely going to give us the chance now to take an Australian brand to the world with the best expertise. Now you've got an amazing presence, 900 stockets, of export portfolio of 15 countries. What are the keys to your business success? Um, that's an interesting question. I don't think there ever is a limit to the number of keys. Invariably good businesses do 100 things 1% better. That creates the improvement. Um, it comes down, as I said before, to people. When people care at every step of the manufacturing process, the selling process, the marketing process, you've actually got the commitment to deliver excellence. Um, that, I think, is the key to our success. I think the other part is that we've kept something unique, and that is to be a manufacturer in this country making a handcrafted product. And we know on a world scale that the way we make a boot now is the last type of structured boot of its type on the planet. Um, the equipment has changed. We've made sure we actually are now even engineering our own equipment to make sure we keep the production in place. Um, so all of those things, you know, it's, it's never one thing that is the success. Um, but I think if you're responsible to the history of a business, to its development and growth, and you employ the great people behind it, um, that's really the difference. And our factory, you know, it is simply amazing when you've got staff that have served over 40 years, multiple staff, over 25 years, three generations, um, husband and wives, you know, the kids are now in the factory. We've got Indigenous um, students that we've actually worked with to make sure we're getting a lot of those benefits to our business today. And over nine different countries represented on your factory floor. Um, it's probably reflective of Australia. And that is that we are welcoming to people. We do like to work with each other. And most importantly, you learn from each other. You know, everyone has two ears and one mouth. They probably should use them in that order. Okay, looking at your investment with L Capital, uh, how did you go about preparing the business for the investment? Well, it's interesting. We actually have always had a philosophy and driven by Ken that the business always had to have value. It was always about creating greater value. And that's also about making sure owners reinvest. Um, I've got to say we're very fortunate and have always been fortunate with Ken's ownership that the reinvestment, the big ideas that we'd come up with wanting to grow the business, um, I never got a no. Yes, I had to make sure that it was absolutely articulated correctly, but it was always a case of saying, let's put more value, grow more value into this business. And we structured and operated the business like it was public. So to then actually have somebody interested in coming into the business, it wasn't a case of preparing it, it was prepared. And I think that was one of the great compliments we got out of the process when we sat down with El Cap. Uh, they looked at the business and said, you know, a lot of the work that we'd normally have to come into a business and do, has been done. This is great to get this to this point in this nation and have the export that's happening. Um, they really then saw their role very much as being complementary. And I've got to say, the added value they bring, their expertise, um, it's been fantastic to date. And the future is really exciting. Okay, you've recently won the uh, contract to fit out the entire uh, army with boots. How do you win a big contract like that? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, the whole process of the Australian Defence Force tender came from an unfortunate uh, occurrence where there was a parade uh, held at one of the military bases and as our 
men and women that protect and look after this nation left the parade ground, uh, there were multiple soles of boots left on that parade ground. And I think anybody that's a citizen of this country would find that very hard to understand, that those people that defend us didn't have the right equipment. Thankfully, the then minister and the defence force saw what occurred and they said, right, we need to rectify this. A tender was created. The tender had some very strong specifics what had to take place. And we were fortunate, based on making product here, making to the criteria that was required, that our elastic sided boot um, actually now is the parade boot of the Australian Defence Force. And, uh, and that's been great for business. Um, all credit, I've got to say, to the government and to the ADF to say we need to look after these men and women. It was interesting during the process that we also found out how important it's become to make sure they have the right type of apparel for when they go into combat. And the sort of investment that's made there um, is something that we should all be very comfortable with. They really are making sure that those men and women are kitted out properly. And uh, I can tell you, the people in our factory, they're making those boots with an immense amount of pride. Um, to actually be able to support them in some small way that we are um, is great for our business and there's a huge amount of pride that comes with it. And how important is culture within the business to its success? Any business only ever survives and flourishes because of its people. Uh, people in this business are absolutely paramount. Um, everyone has the responsibility to uphold what RM Wins has become over 80 years. And that's everyone. Um, there's not a dinner conversation, a casual event, um, going to fill up your car. If somebody knows you're at RM Williams, they share stories with you. And our staff really appreciate that. They respect it. Um, but people are the critical issue. I think the second most important part is integrity. Businesses that have integrity, that are honest enough to say when they get it right and also admit when they get it wrong and learn from the mistakes. And to look to the future, look over the horizon. What is the business going to be in two, three, four, five years' time? and be brave enough to take those steps, but make sure you do it in a measured way. Uh, given the traditional production techniques are so important to your brand and products, how do you balance that with new technologies coming on board? So it is important. I think a lot of businesses tend to sort of say, this is how we've always done it. And by doing that, they become stagnant. Um, we've been very conscious to make sure that even with our handcrafted techniques with our boots, we look to modern technology. We've put in um, lean manufacturing into our boot production system. Something that was really engineered for the making of motor vehicles. Um, making sure that product doesn't stop moving through the process. Um, so when you start to apply modern techniques, modern deliveries, and then you use modern equipment, laser cutters, to cut the leathers to make sure we get the greatest yield. You know, they're not in Australia. They're in Italy and Europe and other places that we have to get this equipment, train our staff, make sure our engineers know how to service it. All of that adds to your efficiency and to your throughput. And I've got to say, the developments over the last seven to eight years in that area in particular has really put us in the position that we're in today to not only fulfil Australian Defence Force contracts, but to now start to look at the world as a marketplace. Many businesses in Australia that have been successful have tried to go overseas. Normally, it's their failure has been because they really haven't understood, if it works, the enormity of supply. Um, we've been very measured about that. We understand what we have to do. And that's where you also complement your business with offshore manufacture. And that's something that we initiated some eight, nine years ago. And Hamish, what's the future for RM Williams? Well, it's like any Australian business. I mean, um, we're a country of 20 plus million people. Um, when you look at us in terms of population, we're New York. But we have such quintessential elements that the world desire in this country, that to take those products into the new marketplaces, Position them with our heritage and with the understanding they're Australian, but most importantly, let people share in Australia. Um, I think that's the great opportunity we have. And this business today, if we keep growing the way we are, um, we will grow um, by over 100% in the next three to four years, which when you think about a journey of 80 years, to then in four to five years, have that incremental increase. And as Ravi Thakran, who is the uh, managing director of El Capital said, you know, this business has the potential to be a billion dollar business. Um, I have no doubt that that's possible. I think the great part is to be rooted in Australia, to still be making product here, complementing it with offshore manufacture. Um, it's a privilege to take Australia to the world. Well, it's a fantastic Australian success story. We really look forward to the future. Great, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.